Well, praise the Lord. I uh, want to speak on three spirits that control the attitude of men toward women. That should be an interesting subject, shouldn't it? (laughs) But uh, it's a teaching uh, subject. And uh, before we uh, get into that, I'd like to turn to Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 30. Proverbs 24 and verse 30. I went by the field of the slothful and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns and nettles had covered the face thereof. The stone wall thereof was broken down. And this is the key verse. Verse 32. Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. Well, what did he receive instruction from? Somebody else's failure. And you know, I was meditating on this. And throughout life, I think I have learned most by seeing people fail than people succeeding. And it goes on. Yet a little sleep, little slumber, little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. So uh, he considered this well. And you know, I want you to consider these three spirits. Very well indeed. Well, the first one is the spirit of hatred. The spirit of hatred. And we find hate in the word of God. And it starts really in the book of Genesis. Although it's uh, found in First John chapter 2 and verse 10. First John chapter 2 and verse 10. Where the Apostle John is referring to Cain and Abel. And First John chapter 2. And uh, it speaks of one that hates his brother. And then in First John chapter 4, again it says, If a man loves God and hateth his brother, then he is a liar. He is a liar. Now, this basically comes from Cain and Abel. And... Uh, Why did Cain hate Abel? It was because the works of Cain were wicked. In 1 John chapter 3 and verse 12, not as Cain who was of that wicked one and slew his brother. Now why did he slay him? Because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous, his brother's righteous. And uh, throughout my life, I have seen that. That the wicked hate the righteous. They hate the righteous, and of course, in this first case, It came to murder. So, 
There it is. Cain hated Abel because his brother's work was righteous and his were not. And yet he could have changed, you see, because God gave him that opportunity. God said, well, if you change, you know, you will rule over him. But no, you see, in the heart of Cain, there was a love of wickedness. And because of that, he hated his brother. Now, I'm going to touch another thing which is very delicate and I really don't like touching these things. But nonetheless, I have to. It's a question of Ammon, one of the uh, sons of King David. And uh, in Second Samuel chapter 13 and about verse 15, You know, Ammon had a great desire and a great love for Tamar. And the result was, you know, he committed sexual immorality with her. But then after having done so, that love was turned to hatred. And there you get the thought of love turning to hatred because of a wicked act. And so hatred really comes from wickedness. It comes from a desire not of doing the things that are right. And I'd like to look with you at one or two other verses along the thought of hatred. And uh, if you would turn with me to Proverbs chapter 5, please, and verse 12. And here is a Christian man who has been taught the ways of God. But he ends up by saying in verse 12, how have I hated instruction and my heart despised reproof. And so we must very be very careful indeed about hating instruction. Many people hate study, but I tell you this, there is no other key to success than study. You have to study. But if you hate it, well, what is the end going to be? See, in verse 13, and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined mine ear to them that instructed me. In other words, he wouldn't listen to those over him. He wouldn't listen to his teachers. And the result was, He said, I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly. Hated instruction. Hated instruction. Now, in uh, Proverbs chapter 8, there is this wonderful chapter on wisdom but it says he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul all they that hate me love death and so you see hatred and love 
go together. Hatred of wisdom, we love death. It's a very solemn thing. And then uh, in the Proverbs chapter 11, it speaks there, you know, of hating knowledge. Hating knowledge. Now, what do we love? And what do we hate? Well, if we love righteousness, if we love wisdom, if we love instruction, if we love knowledge, it's going to put us on the right path. Let us examine our hearts, you see, because the reverse of that is hatred. The spirit of hate comes in. And I'm not just quoting scripture here, but it was an experience during the night, uh, some nights ago, when I saw these spirits and it troubled me greatly. You see, because these spirits, this one of hatred, that if we don't do that which is right, if we don't do that which is good, I saw something else in the spirit. I saw a hatred of one's wife. Because, you see, what we are, we carry around with us everywhere we go. People say, well, if we moved him to so-and-so, would he be different? You can't be, because he's carrying that around with him. But uh, I saw that very clearly Right, that is the first of the three spirits, hatred. And so we've got to examine ourselves very clearly indeed. We must love instruction, wisdom, knowledge, and of course, a wife, and of course, our brother. The next spirit is a spirit of bitterness. Bitterness. As I said, you know, I'm dealing with three spirits that affect men towards women. And this one of bitterness is very strong indeed. Uh, Let's have a look at Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 26. Now remember it's the spirit of bitterness. And I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets, her hands as bands, but whosoever pleases God shall escape from her but the sinner shall be taken by her. There you've got a woman that we call the strange woman. And she has left the paths of righteousness and she has fallen into all kinds of bondages herself and she desires a certain man. And when she gets him, oh, how bitter he becomes. Now, there's another, shall I say, source of bitterness in the home. And uh, my wife and I were married by uh, a pastor who was called Garfield Vale. And he uh, was a very interesting and quite a brilliant man. He was a missionary. 
to the Belgian Congo, which is Kinshasa is the capital now, and I think they just call the country the Congo. But he was a missionary there. And somehow his wife persuaded him to leave the mission field with their four children to give those four children an education. Well, you don't do things like that. In actuality, you put your children in the hands of God and ask him to direct you in bringing them up. And I get involved so much in uh, giving counsel to parents concerning their children. Well, he left God's call upon his life. And he left Africa and came back to England. But what was the fruit of all that? Well, the fruit was that the children did get a good education. But my wife, who was quite close to his wife, said, Oh, Sister Vale is filled with bitterness because there was conflict now between husband and wife. The wife had persuaded the husband to leave his calling and go back to England for the sake of the children's education. And the result was his heart was still in the Congo and she realized what a terrible thing she had done and of course there was conflict between the two of them and bitterness filled their souls. I could mention names, but obviously I won't now. But earlier on, you know, there was somebody who was called to a certain country, and uh, the wife said, Oh, no. The education of our children... You can't educate them there in that country. Well, what happened? They turned one of their promising young boys, whom I love very much, and turned him into college. And just before he got his degree, he fell down dead. And then they say he hit the mark. I wonder which mark he hit. So there is where bitterness comes in, in the family. God's call must come first. And then uh, I have to counsel many young people on who to marry. And this is in another country. And uh, all the friends of the uh, bride-to-be and she's a lovely girl. I love her very much. I've known her for a long time. And uh, they say, you know that fellow that you're going to marry? I mean, he's not a bit like you. You don't have the same goals. 
you don't have the same ideals and so forth. Well, she wouldn't listen. And so eventually the senior pastor wrote me and said, will you pray and ask the Lord what he gives you in this matter? And I did and I said, oh, she'll be disappointed. And that will lead to bitterness. And what happened was she cried but went ahead. And so you have to be very careful indeed in this matter of marriage. Because if you make a mistake, the fruit is bitterness. And bitterness is a terrible thing. And the only way I know to eradicate bitterness is to put things right. Well, with our dear friend Garfield Vale, what happened? Very interesting. After he had married us, we uh, took an interest, if I could say that. He was older than I am. And uh, interest in him, prayed. And you know, God and his graciousness enabled him to go back to Africa for six months. And he went up and down, up and down the countries in Africa. And he saw miracle after miracle. It was as though God said, this would have been your life had you indeed obeyed me and not gone back to England. This would have been your life. Miracles, miracles, miracles. Well, then there came a mission convention after he came back in the country of Wales, and he fell down dead in that uh, missionary convention. It was as though God had given him six months to show him what it could have been had he have put God first. And uh, I have to warn you along those lines. Well, you know, getting the wrong woman is a terrible thing. And I could have easily gotten the wrong woman uh, several of them actually if they if God had not been gracious to me and enabled me to escape and they were nice girls I mean uh, don't think they were no good they were very nice girls but they hadn't got the call that was upon my life and uh, over in America I was in Switzerland at that time over in America, you know, uh, they prayed for my wife. And God said, I will give you a man of like vision. Well, she came to Switzerland with a missionary lady friend. And uh, everybody said, you're meant for one another. You preach the same, you talk the same, and this, that, the other. And uh, we had a wonderful life. You know, around the table, one would start a sentence, the other would finish it. It's very amusing. But we had the same vision. There was no Conflict. There never was any conflict in our marriage. And it was just one of joy and one of happiness. And even though we suffered greatly because of her health, I can say this. We had a very happy life. 
And uh, you know, Pastor Paul Caram thinks that one or two of my sermons are very good indeed. I said, well, <laughs> they're not really mine. They came from my wife, you see. But anyway, uh, there we are. There we are. Now then, the third spirit is the spirit of lust. Lust. And uh, in Proverbs chapter 6, it speaks of a strange woman again. But it says in Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 25, Lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. You know, I've been amazed through constantly reading Proverbs that it comes from the pen of King David the first chapters and his instruction to Solomon. The warnings about adultery and fornication and and you know a pastor who uh, who was uh, quite old and he said oh if you know we have started reading the book of Proverbs consistently we look at our watches and find the day and then that's the chapter we read he said oh if only I had done that earlier on in my life he said I would have been preserved from many problems with women. Well, I don't think you need the book of Proverbs to be preserved from immorality, but it sure does help. Um, But it seems that there's warning after warning after warning. Warning after warning after warning. And uh, how shall we be preserved? Well, in Psalm 119 and verse 8, the question is put in rhetoric uh, form. Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way? And the answer comes back by taking heed according to thy word the interesting thing is this I have seen great students of the word of God and yet they have fallen into immorality so that alone is not sufficient I'm more inclined to go to Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 26 You know, whosoever find favor in God's sight, he will preserve. And I just feel, from my own point of view, I mean, these uh, girls whom everybody wanted me to marry, and they were nice girls, you see. I mean, they didn't come in the category of strange women. But... God warned me in visions. He said, if you take that girl to be your wife, you'll only rise to a certain height in God. If you take this wife, you'll only spend your time living in a house and you will not travel as I want you to travel. He was so good to me. He warned me. And so I'm more 
of the uh, inclination when it's a question of getting the right girl and of course the girl getting the right husband it's a favour of God it's a favour of God and really although we perspire and uh, are very concerned here on earth about getting the right person in marriage I think heaven is more concerned and if we do those things that please God he that ordereth his conversation aright will I show the salvation of God and if we do those things right you know conversation means not only speaking the things that are right by doing the things that are right. And if we do those things, God will preserve us. You know, people were saying you should marry this certain girl. May I say there weren't tons of girls, but there were a few of them. And uh, an evangelist came up to me and he said, God has spoken to me for you. I said, oh yes, what is it? He said, do not go with that girl. He said, she is not the girl for you. And uh, I thanked him. I listened to him. And he was a premier evangelist in England at that time. The interesting thing, I had a friend at Bible school and... uh, I arranged his marriage for him. Well, that was in England. And I was in Switzerland after that. And he came to Switzerland with his wife, very happy. And said, he, now he said, I want to return the favor that you did for me. I said, what favor was that? He said, well, getting me a wife. I said, well, I I'm not not really interested in one why what do you mean when he said God told me that you are going to marry very soon I said oh dear me I said is it the right one he said oh yes it will be the right one but I must confess that God kept me and preserved me and saved me And so with my experience, I'm very cautious about marriage. Well, lust of the eyes. And that is very dangerous in marriage because if that isn't dealt with Adultery follows and fornication and everything else. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and I'm reading from 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15, and the pride of life. Well, what can I say to you? Those three spirits came to me uh, almost a week ago. God started to speak to me about those three spirits, of how they can destroy marriages, how they can destroy a household, how they can destroy people. The spirit of hate because we do not love that which is right. The spirit of bitterness, because we make wrong choices. And the lust of the eyes, well, it speaks for itself. Very strong. Very, very strong. Very strong spirit, that is. A spirit of lust.
Well, in closing, I want to say this. Somebody you know, Dr. Paul Carum, and uh, somebody you may not know, but Dr. Kevin Connor, spent their early years studying. And you know that study has kept them throughout their life. And I tell you this, if you study God's word and God's word comes into you, you are going to be preserved from making the wrong choices. And I want you preserved. I want you just for God. I want you to live for God. And I want these three spirits to be cleansed from your life so that the spirit of hatred will be replaced by the spirit of love. The spirit of bitterness will be replaced by the spirit of sweetness. And the lust of the eyes be cleansed through the spirit of purity. And oh God created me a pure heart, you see. And if we will do those things, you know, I remember I was on a trip in the Middle East with Dr. Kevin Connor. And uh, he was saying, you know, that uh, in his early years, he had spent so much time in his garage that uh, he had converted into a little study. And he said, from those fruits of study, he said, I could then teach others. I think Dr. Paul Caron was the same. And uh, to some degree, you know, I've spent my early years studying. And that's what I would encourage you to do. Study. Study to show yourself. A man or woman approved of God, rightly dividing the word of God. And above all, crying out to God, O oh God, that I be cleansed from all hatred. Lord, that I be cleansed from all bitterness. Lord, that I be cleansed from lust. Because those three spirits, I saw them so clearly, as I said some days ago, can ruin a marriage but also ruin a person. So let us ask God for a spirit of love, a spirit of sweetness, a spirit of purity, so that those flow from us and that by the grace of God we receive his approval and that he will direct us day by day into the good paths, into the paths of righteousness, into the path, you know, that shineth more and more brightly unto the perfect day. Lord, keep me on the right path. And uh, I've been horrified by people I thought were on the path but things have come up and they've had to confess that they were not on the right path. Well, we want to be on the right path. So be careful, all right? Make sure you love instruction. Make sure you love wisdom. And then uh, also... You know, God's calling comes first in your life, not your children. 
God will take care of them. But don't let them take you off the path of God. And then the lust of the eyes, the cut, you know, lust of the flesh and so forth. Oh God, purify me. Create in me a pure heart. If only King David had asked that earlier on in his life, he would never have been known for the man who uh, killed and murdered Uriah and took his wife. You know, we don't want those blots in our lives. But we want uh, garments without stain. So anyway, please meditate upon those three spirits. And may God grant that each and every one of us be purified from them.